my expression wasn't much better than yours when I first saw this. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. It's her. The famous singer, Robin. Well, first of all, can I just say that this had nothing to do with me? I'm just an unlucky bystander here. The family can testify for me. If you don't believe me, just ask anyone in the Bloodhound family. They hate me, and they hate the IPC, so they'd never lie. This is not where the crime happened. What I showed you was a memory. The most basic light cone manifesting tech. Authorized by the Garden of Recollection, and owned by the IPC. Did you really think the Galaxy Rangers were outsiders this whole time? Panicone has made a solemn commitment to protect the safety of anyone inside a family dream. Any person in distress will be forcibly awakened and safely returned to reality. What gives them the confidence to make such conclusive statements? Because behind this promise is the harmony. The family's Dreamweavers link up their minds together to construct an unbreakable defensive line. Breaking through this line of defense to create death in the dreamscape. <laughs> Not even a memo keeper could do that without the family's permission. Who could have done it, friend? The only one is her. The girl who calls herself a Galaxy Ranger. An imposter. An unsought guest. An emanator who hides her true identity. Ifrit's death was a foregone conclusion, and Robin? Her misfortune was staring right at her. Who will be the next to die? It's fine. Listen to your gut. Building trust always takes time. And I'm willing to wait. I just hope you realize that wherever that legacy is concerned, covert plans are already underway throughout Panicone. Everyone's got their own agenda. Careful you don't get stuck on the wrong side. <laughs> if I were you, I'd keep my distance from Acheron. After all, any schemes out in the open are always going to be better than a monster in the shadows. Right? Who's to say there isn't an even deeper conspiracy lurking beneath the surface? Memo Keeper, I think our little deal is finished. Aventurine is telling the truth. This memory is a real one, and there's no sign of any distortion grafting on. The IPC is not the Garden. And there are real limits to what they can actually do, but you know all this. Friend, let's not beat around the bush here. The thing is, I want to reach out personally to team up with the Astral Express. I told you I'm just not interested in scrambling for the legacy. I just came to Pentagoni for work. I'm here to retrieve some lost property for the IPC, if you catch my drift. I'm talking ownership of this frontier prison. This has all become a bad debt thanks to the cancer of all worlds. The IPC has tried sitting down for negotiations time and again, but the family wouldn't even take our calls. You have no idea how difficult these people are to deal with. Put it this way, they've hushed up the existence of death before, so they can definitely cover up any news about Robin's death. It'll just quietly float off like a bubble and pop. Nobody ever being the wiser. That's not fair, right? So then, friend, I need your help. I have but only one goal. 
The family's front door is like a high wall. And to tear the whole thing down, I'll have to dig out a few chunks first. Once I find a weak point, the IPC will have plenty of means. Now we have our chance. So long as we can get to the truth behind her death, we can have justice for Robin. <laughs> While also gaining a valuable bargaining chip for bringing the family to the table. Truly a once in a blue moon opportunity. I've been investigating and making lots of friends all over Panacone precisely for this very moment. This tragic news would be extremely bad for the family, so they'll be doing everything they can to stop it leaking, especially to the IPC. But I trust that there are still a few factions that remain exceptions, and that's why I need you all. The reputation of the Astral Express precedes you, and the Harmony will give you the fairest of appraisals. You get to find out really what happened and seek justice and I get to put it toward completing my mission for the IPC. It's what you call a win-win situation. talk things over with your companions. That navigator is really smart. She must understand the value of this deal. Look, here's my contact details. If you come to any conclusions, call me. Oh, and take this. A thorough investigation can always use a little more funding. Don't mention it. So long, friend. I really am looking forward to uncovering the truth about death with everyone. Aventurine just sauntered off. He really doesn't mean to force it, but something still seems off. What now? What are your plans? Black Swan. What is she thinking? This doesn't look like a bad deal for you. But Aventurine is a shrewd merchant whose scheme won't just be as simple as it appears to be. He doesn't know about Miss Firefly yet. But, judging by your reaction, he may have noticed something going on. And deliberately shifted topics to the truth of death. To try and pull you in line with his way of thinking. That's quick thinking, and very sound logic. Aventurine is no fool, and working with him definitely has its dangers. That is something I agree on. Anyway, be careful out there. There's more than one way to blaze a trail. In a dark forest beset by wolves, ensuring your own escape to safety should be your primary concern. As for the other questions... I'm not sure the two cases were committed by the same culprit, but that massive wound looked like its winged blade. We've all witnessed it in action before. Plus, it seems unlikely that there would be two lethal entities loose in the dreamscape. Sorry, I can't answer that question. 
That ranger is shrouded in mystery. I'm afraid no one is capable of providing an answer. But without a doubt, she is the most special guest at this banquet. It's like a venturing said just then. It's best to keep your distance from her. Two victims appearing one after the other in a very short time span, in and of itself, that's very unusual. Two possibilities. The collapse of Panacone's dreamscape has started speeding up, making death extremely agitated and weakening the family's protections. Or, everything has been planned out and executed by someone. If someone has chosen these victims deliberately, first a smuggler, then a family celebrity, then this murderer's motives are worth thoroughly chewing over. It's all happened so quickly, I can only make conjecture. After leaving here, go have a chat with your companions. I hope you can clarify the source of this confusion. Come, this way. It's a short walk. Don't get lost. This is where we part ways. All of this is like a nightmare. Unfortunately, the remembrance doesn't lie. What we just saw is the reality that happened, and it won't fade from our minds just because we wake up. But follow your heart and don't be afraid. We all walk through this world casting shadows of different lengths, and ultimately, all we leave behind are precious memories. Ah, hold on just a sec. There you go, a small parting gift. If one day you unfortunately fall into the deep waters of the memory zone and there's no memo keeper to join you, hopefully it can guide you on my behalf. I also pay great attention to the ways of the world. Just think of this as an apology from me for hiding something from you. Then, I have something private to take care of regarding that Galaxy Ranger. Let's leave things there, shall we? What fascinating memories will you bring for me next time we meet? I sincerely look forward to them. Family breath. Is Himiko okay?
then. I should take a moment to gather my thoughts and wait for everyone to arrive. Dream Hunter, of those slain by your hand. Most 
brilliant and intense fire in existence. May this flame illuminate the farthest reaches of your bottomless dream. A bottomless dream. Yes, that's right. But you've made one small mistake. This blade remains in its scabbard not out of pity or scorn. It's a personal secret that I don't want to disclose, but... Perhaps out of reciprocity. I'll reveal the truth to you. The hunt is not the path I truly follow. May death be the end of your boundless dream. Guiding you back to the waking world. I still see them in my dreams. Hold it. Your time hasn't come yet. My time? I've seen many clever disguises that can conceal appearances. But they can never cover up who a person really is. And you're no different. You had no desire to kill the Trailblazer. You only did what you did to drive me and the Memo Keeper away, but... Why? <sighs> did Destiny's slave make you do it? You know, Elio. I thought this is just the kind of thing that'd get written into your script. My script has always been brief. Other than that, anything beyond that is unnecessary. He knows my nature. There is but a single destiny from which no one can escape. And until then, I hold the privilege of choice. However, you appear to be ignorant of this. So it's time for me to inquire. Who exactly are you? Not your enemy, perhaps. That's not what I asked. I don't deserve your curiosity. Loners wandering the cosmos always have their secrets. Take me. I'm wanted by the IPC, so it's little wonder that I know something about the Stellaron Hunters. That's all. Maybe I can help. What reason would you have for doing that? I tend to forget things. Which is why, rather than memories, I'm accustomed to using my emotions to capture what I normally wouldn't otherwise. So... I know who is inside that cold armor. <gasps> How about it? Ready to take off that armor and sit down for a talk? It's not yet time. I don't need help. But I can give you a suggestion that would make things better for you and me. If your goal is the Watchmaker's legacy, then go look into the family. Not only are they covering up the existence of death, but they're burying the past and the truth about what happens inside the dreamscape. Already on it. And the Astral Express is no enemy of yours. I know that. I just never expected to hear you say it. What's next, then? The trailblazer's been taken by Black Swan. Will you go look for her? No need for that. No harm in mentioning that Elio's only given me one instruction. Get all of the Astral Express to track down the Grand Legacy. I tried settling this in an easier, 
and more direct way. But as you can see, here I am, confronting you. I failed. Can't ever go against the script. The so-called impossible is merely something that has yet to happen. That's it. Before we split, can I ask you one more thing? Is there anything else in your script about me? I'd like to know what kind of footnote I get to leave in that future foreseen by destiny. Unfortunately, not a thing came up. <laughs> I knew it. Hang on. I... Don't. Don't what? Your first question was... Do you still have dreams? About everyone who died because of you. I don't. Never have. I was born without the ability to dream. I live for this cold, harsh reality. For a little light. And to burn. To keep. On burning until I turn to ash. So I really envy you. Is that so? Then you're already living in the waking world. from Black Swan, but we never expected Miss Robin to... Oh, I'm sorry, but I couldn't be with you then. Reality cruises on in serenity, while undercurrents bubble up from the dreamscape. Just like that memo keeper said. Stay strong, everyone. We can still do what we can for them. Starting with finding the murderer. Let's recap everything then. The trailblazer just reminded me of something. March, do you remember what that family rep who negotiated with us said? Uh, indeed we trust that the Nameless has nothing to do with this. And we also beg each of you to help assist the family in verifying the identity of the deceased. Uh, that's how it was put. In reference to Miss Firefly. Looking back, he seemed a little evasive at the time. And he also failed to mention anything about the earlier murder, too. The family's planning on covering up all news about Miss Robin's death. If news gets out, Penacony's going to turn into a bloodbath. But the murder that followed closely after was obviously beyond their anticipation. The family had to try and turn things to their advantage by bringing in reinforcements from outside. The Charmony Festival is nearly here. They must be snowed under. It may also be that Miss Firefly's murder had so many witnesses that it couldn't be covered up. So they went with the flow and let more people on the scene to control the situation. After all, the nature of the two murders is fundamentally different. The family's first protective measure should be against malicious actors among the guests, such as that IPC envoy. Indeed, he was particularly concerned about that Galaxy Ranger. Are we missing the forest for the trees here? I always felt that Aventurine's reasons for accusing Miss Acheron were highly subtle. Can we believe him? At this point, I'm afraid the only ones we can trust are ourselves. Look, 
Let's try to gather intel first, and then list all the possible outcomes we can. Then we go through them, eliminating contradictions one by one. The fewer facts remaining, the closer we are to the truth. I've still got this sense of foreboding. It's like we're stuck in a whirlpool, spinning around that legacy even after everything that's happened. Uh, this time we're playing the role of a real detective. But before we start, what are we going to say to the family and adventuring? As I see things, the family harbors no ill will towards the Astral Express. If they didn't trust the crew, they wouldn't have casually commissioned outsiders to investigate a case that's in all likelihood a scandal. Plus, this is the family's turf. Teaming up with them should make things easier for us in the future. As for that aventurine, well, I'd like to hear your thoughts. He's complex. He deliberately slow played his hand during negotiations while running circles around us all the while. He appealed convincingly to both reason and emotion. It wasn't forced, but the intent was obvious. Still, it's good to have contacts among all this uncertainty. Adventurine showed his skills, and as far as our interests are aligned, he can become a reliable ally. We also need to keep a certain distance from the family. Never let them get too close. Teaming up with the IPC helps balance that out. If either side makes a move, we have the option to pull out. So you suggest accepting Aventurine's proposal to team up? Yes. It's risky, but we can only wait until both sides have played their cards before making any further judgments. I get why, but there's a whole lot of bad guys and girls around here, and I'm worried about getting stabbed in the back. She's been bullied a few times now, and I can't stand it anymore. Forget about it. Just let me keep an eye on him. If that doesn't work, we can just turn the tables and use him instead. Then, could you please reply to Aventurine? Everyone, take this time to put together your thoughts. Looks like Aventurine is happy with this outcome. Let's tell everyone about it. Aventurine's goal is to try and recapture Penacony for IPC. To do this, he'll have to bring down the family in its entirety to create a big enough chance. The existence of death will be covered up by the family. So how does he plan on taking them down? It's gotta be something important enough that everyone will notice. 
but it also can't be anything too out in the open. An attack on the hotel guests? Unlikely. Pinnacone's guests include quite a few bigwigs known throughout the whole cosmos. People who not even the IPC would dare take lightly. Aventurine is a shrewd merchant, and there's no way he doesn't know that. He's definitely going for the family, and it's just a matter of how. The harmony is strong in Pinnacone, and almost impossible to take on head to head. The fact that the IPC dispatched Venturine shows that they do not intend to simply play by the book here. Aventurine has devoted considerable attention to her. But this Galaxy Ranger... We know hardly anything about her, and can't rush to any conclusions. Hmm, I was also considering this possibility. Especially... because he respects you so much, and has sought you out before a few times. Perhaps he's also unsure of your intentions and is probing you. I'm just speculating. In any case, we have to be careful when handling Aventurine. He's skilled at reading people and discerning the right moment to strike. Also, he's clearly a born gambler if he's willing to go all in to win. Venturine said something that concerns me. He accused that Galaxy Ranger of killing Robin without any evidence whatsoever, but said nothing about her connection to that Memory Zone meme or why he was stalking you. It was a groundless accusation, which only serves to make him seem more suspicious. Maybe Adventurine's goal was never to gain our trust. Maybe he wanted to foster a feeling of enmity towards Acheron and make the situation more volatile. Two birds, one stone. However, I asked Don Hung back on the Express to confirm that story about the Annihilation Gang and the lost messages. It wasn't something that Adventurine made up out of thin air. You've met her many times now. What's your impression of Miss Acheron? That fits the stereotype of a Galaxy Ranger to a T. They're eccentric, unpredictable, and fond of being alone. No wonder she's a suspect. I really love Clocky. I've checked off the list. bring it up but I feel like Miss Robin isn't actually dead but that she's still alive and well somewhere but everything's just some horrible prank because aren't we supposed to be inside a dream how could someone die in a beautiful dreamscape like this Shouldn't only good things happen here? <sighs> Whenever I see the Grand Theater, I just can't stop all these thoughts. 
thoughts from flooding my head. No, no. After all, they've brought everyone this sleepy dreamscape, which everyone loves. I just feel like I'm starting to understand them less and less. Everyone's still having a great time out there on the streets. Nobody knows what's happened. It's all so unreal. As if Firefly, Miss Robin, and us were all outsiders from another world. Aw, what a mess. I really want a nice cool drink of soda to help me calm down. Ah, uh, but... Then I'd be just like everyone else out on the streets. Uh. Looks like Aventurine doesn't need anything else. Let's turn our attention to the family's assignment for now. Imako, what do you think? Among our current clues, the two murders that she witnessed are the most directly connected. I suggest starting here. One thing I'm curious about is, if a person dies in a dream, what happens to them in real life? Seeing as we're at the family's behest, why not pop back out to reality and verify Miss Firefly's situation back at the hotel? Perhaps we could also make a few inquiries about her while out there. How about we split off into two groups? There are still some things worth focusing on inside the dreamscape. I'll investigate those, and we can link up again later. Worth focusing on? Oh. No problem. I'll leave it to you, then. Huh? Aw, I thought I'd finally get to see Himeko and Mr. Yang go out on a mission together. Oh, well. Take care, then, Mr. Yang. <laughs> I will. Keep in touch. Hmm. Honored guest, could you come out for a second? I'd be embarrassed too, getting stared at like that. Forgive me. Uh, my name is Welt Yang. I'm one of the crew members on the Astral Express. I believe you've met my colleagues. Welt. Is there something about my name? First, don't you want to know my name? I already do, Miss Acheron. You're a prominent figure in Panacone. What are they saying about me? Some claim that you're the real culprit behind these murders. That the Annihilation Gang's tragic fate at the banquet was a result of your blade. And that you're now attempting to unleash another bloodbath on Penicone. The Annihilation Gang? Ifrit of Everflame Mansion. Tragic fate. That duke turned his dying body to flames and sacrificed his life as a martyr. He was a determined and heroic pathstrider. Not even a villain should be disparaged like this. And what's more, there were plenty of suspects invited. Do they really think that a blade is more dangerous than that black hole you're wielding? Keen intuition. Not even the family managed to point out the truth behind this cane. So you must surely know, Miss Acheron, that peering into a black hole is not a wise move. As a potential threat, your knowledge of us has reached uncomfortable depths. Reveal your true identity and intentions. Otherwise, brace yourself for gravitational disintegration. That shouldn't be necessary. But if it makes the Nameless feel less defensive, I'll be happy to abide. Believe it or not, Galaxy Ranger, Acheron, 
Those are the names I go by to this very day. My trip to Panacone is solely to fulfill an old, final request. I'm here for the Watchmaker's legacy. And that's it. I think I've been honest enough. Still unwilling to reveal your true identity? It's not that I don't want to. It's just that I can't. I've come so far, and I can't sum up all of that in just a few words. Everyone has their own unspeakable parts. Secrets that they don't want to be revealed. And I won't be asking any more questions, such as why the Astral Express is roaming around the cosmos with a Stellaron on board. <sighs> is she okay? That memo keeper didn't do anything, right? She's fine. Let's just stick with the topic. Gaining my trust depends on how much you're willing to reveal. I've run around many different Panacone dreamscapes just to try and find that legacy. And during this period, I came into contact with quite a few guests. In the process, I gradually came to realize the secret of Panacone may be closely related to the Trailblaze. That's why I've come to ask for your help. I don't have enough proof yet, but I'd like to speculate something. The source of all tragedy lies within the family. If you could trust me, we could find the proof to support this claim together. Mr. Yang, I think you've come to the same conclusion, haven't you? Let's leave it at that. For now, I'll choose to believe that you bear no hostility. Share your findings with me and me alone. I don't want vague conjecture to interfere with other people's judgments before we find solid proof. Mm hmm By the way, would you like something to drink? Before we go, how about two cups of wake the heck up? No. Four cups. Because the conversation coming up will last forever. I've been watching her closely for a while now, and the first invitation was in the banquet hall of the hotel. She just sat in one corner, keeping silent chugging down a couple cups of wake the heck up. I told her it's a pungent, bitter beverage, not the taste of sweet dreams, only for people allergic to soul glad. And she said, Really? But I don't taste any difference at all between them. The guest rooms are charmingly minimalist, an aesthetic you share, Miss Acheron. It's a cinch, this music box. The invitation received by the Annihilation Gang. There are latent memories that linger on it yet. You see, memories of you are not yours alone. They travel in other people, other things. I know much, and I can predict even more. With some help, the dead can be made to speak. The Annihilation Gang, that band of desperados who all disappeared after meeting you, what exactly happened to them? Well, let me reveal all. There it is. It's Hazy, but it's Ifrit's voice. The other one is probably his progeny. 
This is the residual memory from when the invitation was first delivered. They were abruptly interrupted. Then, what happened next is... They sought refuge in the land of sleep. Merely wishing for undisturbed rest, away from the storms. Children of the flame, this marks your right of passage. She won't be necessary. I alone am enough. Shh. When have thou, on the path of destruction, feared death? The Everflame Mansion has set out on a journey. Those poor people, they have no idea what lies in wait ahead of them. Memory recovery is going well, but slowly. She'll be here soon, and time is short. There's nobody else here, so there's no need to be delicate. In fact, I think I'd better go all out. After that is blank. How is that possible? This music box fell into Acheron's hands and she brought it to Panacone. That's a fact, and that's how it should have gone. But along the way, it's like it's been erased. Who's done this? For the cremators? My name is Constance. A pleasure to meet you. We were supposed to meet in Pentagoni and spend it... <laughs> Unforgettable time together. But that seems unrealistic. Dolly is not welcome on the banquet store, and I don't need a coming-of-age ceremony. I know what you're looking for. Want her secret? I can give it to you, and then you can enjoy the banquet for me. I wish you unforgettable memories. days ago, the IPC made an announcement. Under the watchful guidance of the Marketing Development Department and in accordance with the Interstellar Peace Charter, the independent Sigonian sovereignty has hereby been established and shall take a legislative seat at the Interstellar Congress. The formation of the Sigonian sovereignty is of great historical significance to the Sigonia system. This move puts an end to the planet's long and bloody history, turning the sensational Kataka Abjin extinction event into a distant memory. Sigonia 4 is located in an unclaimed zone at the intersection of the Denise, Pruthian, and Dorno star clusters. The planet's surface environment is known for being extremely harsh, constantly faced with the threat of impact from small scale celestial objects. This is why very few intelligent species have made this planet their home. 
dividing themselves into several tribes to eke out nomad lifestyles as they struggle to survive the arid desert wilderness. They have developed their own folk beliefs that are independent of the Eon belief system. Sigonia. Sigonia. Ravenous eye of the storm, spurned by all the gods. Land of rock, but not water. Lightning, but not rain. Blood, but not tears. You beat us with your falling stars. You lash us with wind and storm. You chew us up with the cracked earth. You promised us a land of honey, yet yoked us beneath a sword of bitterness. Oh, Gyathra Triclops, if thou can hear me, please open up thy three eyes and gaze upon this child. When you took his father, my child was still sleeping in my belly. And where my husband went, I too soon must go. I don't ask for a peaceful death, just for you to tell me. Does the baby swaddled sweetly asleep? Does he dream of his mother's heartbeat and the sound of falling rain? Please tell me whether this life is all just a fleeting dream. Otherwise, why would this child be born to face impending death? Such a lucky child, such a blessed 